<laughs> well, I should actually do the rest of it talking to you like this. <laughs> so, yeah. Richard. <laughs> this is this is the homage, like the unforgettable video. You know, you're you're doing it with the the ghost of Richard Spade, the ghost of Richard Spade. Yeah. Um, so yeah, don't. You ever do sitcoms, Mark? Is, it, is that ever your thing? You ever do three camera stuff? No, never did. I, I I kept getting close to actually having my own comedy series, but I've never done it. <laughs> well, I know I'm a zebra, but I actually. It, it, it's tough because I, I would go in for a lot of horse rolls. <laughs> you know, I don't know how. To, how do I talk as an upside down zebra? I audition for a lot of horse rolls, but they, they, this is the strikes from the issue. Don't show the people that. <laughs> they don't deserve there. Then. You know, I'm just gonna take a rest, and you guys go ahead and finish that. Hello, ladies. <laughs> Afternoon, fellas. Oh, oh sorry, but I've been hitting people with a candy bag. What's the feedback? Hold on. All right. Uh, <clears throat> there you are. Oh, hey. Uh, wow, that was a good death in the candy, Joe. Let me tell you something. You guys can put it away. Well done. Um, the, uh, the, the sitcoms, you brought candy back with you? you? You went out into the audience and stole somebody's candy. It was like an actual currency. I got change. <laughs> <laughs> hey, see if you can go get some money. Go on out again. <laughs> um, so, I, when I was younger, I used to do some sitcom stuff, and that has a very theatrical feel, because you're doing it in front of a live audience, you're doing it in order. So, I, I see the attraction, even though I'm, I'm not, not the biggest fan of three-camera sitcoms, per se, the live audience stuff, but their origin is theatrical, and I, and I love that kind of response. It's a, it's a weird deal. It, it, I'm, I'm used to it now, Mark's used to it now, but it's a weird deal when you come from theater, which he does, which I do, and you have come from doing live audience stuff to go to your first set and start merging into TV work where it's out of order and with no response. Because you think you're fantastic, you've worked on the material, you're hoping you knock it out of the park. The grip, not so much. He's just looking to get to the next shot. Like the guys working in the crew, they're not sitting back going, ha ha, that was awesome, yay. They're like, are we good, are we good? Let's move on. So you don't get a lot of feedback from no, the actual they, they don't do that with me. <laughs> You actually knock it out of the park. Me, I'm phoning it in, you know? Um, <laughs> so I can't work with you. They won't put us on the stage. It's embarrassing. It's so hard. Um, but it's so I do miss that. I do, I, do miss, I do miss that part of it. Because you know, LA is not really a theater town. Right? It, it was. Fun. It used to be. Back in the early 90s, it was an amazing place to do theater. Yeah, it was. We had, we had artist supported 100 seat theater. So you'd have 99 seats in a little building. And people like Lawrence Fishburne, Ed Harris, uh, Charlie Haller, and all these people would do plays every week. Yeah. Like amazing, 99 seat theater. Some of these plays went to Broadway, and some of these plays toured the world. It was amazing. Angels in America started in 99 seat theater. It was incredible. Yeah. All those great. And so did, uh, so did um, Kentucky Cycle. Kentucky Cycle. I was going to say Kentucky Cycle, Cycle which was Cycle. astonishing. I, that year, I, I won with Charlie. I, I, I won. He was doing Kentucky Cycle. I did uh, Cock and Bull Story in the end. Oh yeah, so that's why we won the same awards. But it's it's an amazing thing. We love this. We you can tell. He laps it up, you know. That. But uh, yeah, I, I don't know yeah. if you can tell. They probably don't know I like being in front of a live audience. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't show. But it's so much fun. It's like sharing experiences is, is a much more exciting experience. And actually, if I may, I'd reference your comments you made last night because this is this is our version of live theater now. Like the, the conventions is the response. You know now. We do an episode of Supernatural, he does an episode of, of his mini shows, and this is the audience. I'm telling you, if, you, if you're if you an alien or a robot or some kind of space monster, he's worked with you. This guy, everything on television. So, but this is, the, this is the audience clapping, in a way, because we don't have the live response when we do it, when we shoot the show, when it airs, but the fact that it lives on beyond our, our work on the day in the form of these conventions is, is a giant compliment to the show itself and the work that's put into it. Which is why we all enjoy coming here. Because this is, you know, you guys responding online and responding at conventions is a, a, a great uh, reward for us because we, we act in a vacuum. Exactly what you said last night. We, we, do, we do it hoping that we're hitting the numbers, and when we... We do it for you, it's not that we don't do it for you. 
The thing I left out from, from yesterday is the, the odd piece that some of you guys, I don't know if all of you guys understand this, but we're fans too. We're not, not fans. It's not us and you, it's us. And that's the difference between TV now and TV 20 years ago. Now, TV is made by us, for us. Right. People are our age, with our ideas, that read the same comic books, that read the same books, read, watch the same television, read the same stories. And what's incredible is, it's not that different. That's why we like it. We like it because it, 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 uh, it addresses the things that we feel, the stories that we're interested in. And the great thing is, it, if it's bad, or it's done cynically, or it's done purely to rob us of money and time, we hate it. And it gets cancelled. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it really, no, it really does. I mean, that, that's what's phenomenal. I, you know, this this show, I, Supernatural is a good example. Firefly is a good example. Jericho is a good example uh, of shows that were so uh, wrong place, wrong time. Because yeah. because they survived. No, Supernatural is not an example of that. Firefly and Jericho are though, and both both shows that he and I, you know, he and I have worked on. I was was lucky not to get canceled. Maybe. But but it, it, whatever it did, it, it's it, it's you know navigated the waters great. <laughs> The, the Firefly and Jericho are great examples of shows that had everything that a supernatural had to go on and go on and go on, and it's the it's the old men in the suits. Like it, you know, we used to joke on when we were doing Jericho that that was for CBS. It was like Grandma with a cell phone. Jericho, she's going. I know it's neat. I know it has many features. I don't know what to do with it. I'm going back to the rotary. <laughs> I'm going to the landline. That's why they know the numbers don't work. That's how they know. You know, uh, demographics and and all these things that they quantify for, um, for viewership. They say, oh, 1.2 million people are watching this, or, you know, in America, 1.2 million people is nothing. You know, in Italy, 1.2 million people is a lot of people. But, but uh, oh, leverage, nobody is watching in Italy. You say, the way they collect, huh? No, 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 listen, I understand. That was well, Italians year. will get up and they'll tear you to pieces for saying that. How dare you? It's a fact. Last year, they said, nobody's watching in Italy. They try to cancel leverage. Dean had to work really, really hard to keep, a, to keep leverage on the air. I mean, it's a really interesting thing, because the way that they get the information does not include us. I don't know why, but it well, does Well, i tell you, us. if I may elaborate, that's, there's a little bit of a, we're gonna, this is like a seminar on TV now, but... What's wrong with that? It's hard, to mon it's hard to monetize online audiences, is what it boils down to. Right now, in this day and age, it's hard to monetize online audiences. It used to be easy, because on TV. TV has X number of viewers, you sell the commercial for X number of dollars based on those viewers, show stays on the air. And when, in the internet age, when everybody watches shows online, everybody downloads shows, Hulu, iTunes, you know, however they're watching it, watching the, buying the DVD box set, that all these things that are not on the small box in the living room, they don't know how to monetize that. They don't know how to turn that into, yes, but how does that work in ad dollars? Now, a younger generation of producers that are coming out, the J.J. Abrams of the world and those guys, they are sort of convincing the system that it's important to do that. Shock is a good example of that, like where they go, look, there's value to this show. Keep it on. The audience is loyal. The audience is there. It's not mash numbers, but it's steady numbers. Supernatural is a great example. They're there. We can monetize this. And at the end of the day, for... For us, it's about doing great work, it's about making a great show, and for you guys, it's about watching it. For the suits, it's about how do we cash in. But there's a secondary problem to this, which is if you go to the Nielsen numbers, the fact is that they don't want to, they can get real numbers. If they want real numbers, they can get them now. They don't want real numbers, because the last time they got real numbers, NBC had to pay back a billion dollars to advertisers who won, when they realized people weren't actually watching the Olympics, or people weren't actually watching what they say they're watching. So there's not only the problem of new media and new audiences, but the fact that they don't want to change it because they owe money from the last gamble. That right. And that's why we have the difficulties, and that's why some shows are having, having difficulties staying on the air. But the trick is for everybody, if you love a show, make sure you're watching it when it's on the air, when it's on television. Make sure if you have a DVR, you know, if you record it, make sure you watch it within seven days. It counts. Really? Very, oh yeah, 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 plus seven numbers are really, really huge. And make sure you always write on blogs, you yeah, always that, write on websites, say. and you always do that. But you're, that, you got, they're a living proof of that. Absolutely. Like, Supernatural survives so many, Supernatural has great numbers, but in, in its big fledgling stages, it survived based on the enthusiasm of you. And that's what's so fantastic about it. So, kudos to you, well done. <laughs> Little hand for yourself. Well All right. First and first, I love you, both of you, very, very much. <laughs>
wanted to tell you that she yeah. hasn't spoken to us. <laughs> she, she wanted to tell me she loves us both. She's afraid she of She doesn't break my heart, then she just loves you. you know, share the love. I'm, I'm not sure of this one. I love both of you. Okay. Oh. All right. Thank you. You know what? Second thing, can Mark suggest a really British phrase to reach out to say in his best British accent? Oh, please. And vice versa for Mark with his American accent. Ready? Yeah, but it's not fair because Mark will do a spot on American accent. Oh, I will do, I will do a British accent that will offend the Isles. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> but now I'm just imitating Mark. That was Russian. You went bollocks. <laughs> bollocks. Bo Give me a full sentence. I want to see. I want to see. That's a full sentence. That's just, oh, biggest okay. sentence. How about not an explanation? How about they ain't my tailor. They ain't my tailor. Pressing it in, I think you're a little, you know why? No, that's not Dick Van Dyke. You know who sounds like Dick Van Dyke? No, Sebastian. He said, like, I've been doing Sebastian. Everywhere he walks in, he goes, hello, ladies. Hello, guys. Because he's got this weird American, Scottish, English, French Irish, accent. French, or German. It's like this crazy, like, grab bag of accents. He's like, hello, hello. <laughs> Here's my invitation to Sebastian. Thank you. Thank you. What was the next question to me? Oh, oh, he's gonna be able to do an American accent. No, I can't do that. I never did one. Please. He actually is not, he's actually American. This whole thing is a bit. <laughs> he's gonna kick into his actual accent. Okay, I'm gonna do one. But I'm gonna do it in Southern. Because I'm Southern. We will test his Southern accent. I find your behavior reprehensible. <laughs> I find your behavior Reprehensible. <laughs> I actually found his behavior reprehensible and he sounded like he wanted to bang me. That's the secret, my friend. That was... <laughs> You're reprehensible. Very sexy. Well, thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Hello. I was just wondering if there was a director that you would like to work with, and with Mark, if there's an English director he would particularly like to work with. We just cut out nine tenths of the world's directors. <laughs> we, are we, are we going to go by country? I can only go to England. Yeah. I don't know. I worked, I, my first director I ever worked with was a man called uh, Jim Sheridan. He's like one of my heroes. Uh, <laughs> not a bad film director. Um, Anybody. I mean, I've had such amazing experiences. From, I've worked with I've probably the best TV directors that are out there in different shows. It's just, it, what it is, is I've tried not to, to label my heroes and my wants, and I've really enjoyed the journey thus far. Because I keep getting surprised, and I keep getting wonderful opportunities. I never thought I'd ever do Doctor Who. I mean, I was getting a little bigger in the sci-fi universe, right? So I'm moving up the sci-fi universe. You don't say. Yes. <laughs> As I'm moving up a little bit in the sci-fi universe, Doctor Who is becoming the biggest show on British television. Yeah. From being a joke, yeah. Yeah. when it started out, you know, sets held together with string and chewing gum and <laughs> nobody wanted to do it, to now anybody who's anybody is, is you know, so Michael Gambon was the guest star before me, and the one after me is Michael Sheen. So I'm going like, there's no chance I'm going to get that. <laughs> there is a line behind me of like, you know, in front of me, six million, and behind me, another 20 million. But to be asked to do that is a big deal. So a lot of my dreams are coming true, and I just hang on and enjoy and love it. That's what I try to do. You? Uh, I would say director-wise, in... Well, you did Band of Brothers, for God's sake. I did do Band of Brothers. You did amazing stuff. I did, well, yeah. So... <laughs> you whining about, oh, I don't do much I don't of TV. He does a lot of things on TV. I don't do there's, anything. No, there's no aliens or monsters or robots. I didn't say Max is a bit of a monster. Monster. anything. A Max is a bit of a monster. He is a monster. <laughs> and I, ironically, a robot. You'd... Um, <laughs> the uh, director-wise, I have had the fortune to work with a lot of great people, and likewise, I've worked with a lot of people who who I've never heard of, who are phenomenal. Like you know, TV directors who come out of the. I, say, I do not know these guys. They have a resume the length of my arm. They've been working for years, and their work is astonishing. You just don't know their name. Um, one who stands out to me is an American. Since we're going by country, David Frankel. 
Oh, yeah. N not necessarily anything this room knows. Feature film-wise, he directed The Devil Wears Prada. Absolutely. But for Band of Brothers, he direct directed Episode 7 and ep Episode 9 of Band of Brothers, which I'm a fan of Band of Brothers, not just because I'm in it. I actually am really admire the work that was done for that series. And in a series that I thought was a standout series, his work stood out within that series. I thought he did phenomenal work. He did the episode Battle of the Bulge, the second episode of Battle of the Bulge, and then the episode where Easy Company discovers a concentration camp. And it's sublime work on his part. So David Frankel would be my answer. Great, 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 great director. Oh, great, great, unbelievable. And David Frankel directs with this effortless, and I'll say this, you don't even know he's directing. It's brilliant. It's just, he's, he's so laid back about stuff that you kind of feel you know, like, you don't know what happened. Do you know who I've been directed by that you haven't been directed by? No. Jensen Ackles. <laughs> no, actually, I've been directed by him. I was just in the green room. He told me to get the hell out. <laughs> he directed me to the door. He's a good director. Do you know what he did after the first, uh, this huge scene with Jay? Wet himself. Says, uh, he directed him. It was the first thing he did this year. Is that what did you say? What did the first thing he did? So, the first thing he did, we did this big, long scene here and there, and he comes running in. He's the director. Jensen Ackles' director comes in and goes, Well, I got what I want. Do you guys want another one? I was like, oh, you really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't Who's just go with the say, motion. Who's yeah. going to say, sure, I want another one? So no, no, I got what I want. Do you want another one? Oh. He's really good. He's scary good at it, too. He's really good at it. So, uh, so he's on the list now. He's on the list. He's pretty damn good. That was, there's no one over there. Is that you? Oh, actually, I think it's the ghost of me. <laughs> I have a question. Hi. Uh, if David, if uh, Gabriel and Carly could come back on the show, and have up an episode together. Kissing. <laughs> she means on camera. Oh, sorry. What, what would they be up to? What, what do we just say? Yeah. Yeah. The whole episode? Okay, that's me. <laughs> you're, you're cutting out a whole niche. <laughs> so what, if we could be on the show together, yes. Gabriel, and uh, let me tell you something. If I, come, if I go to the screen with Crowley, I want to come back as the trickster. Because not even need all my wits about me. Let's just say Gabriel's last moment on screen, not his finest hour. Got killed by his brother. Clearly, he's, he's not ready. Stop paying attention. Yeah, yeah, he's not ready to really go toe to toe with the big boys. So I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to bring out the trickster for this kid. I was screaming behind you, behind you, look out! Yeah, you know that's one of those gags that you can only pull off once. You're like, oops, I thought this would play well. Oh well. I saw you on the, I saw you the mustache. Remember that day? The first time I saw you? Yeah, that's actually, okay. The only other time, the only time I met Mark on set, he, they, we were overlapped by a, a few days on the episode. You were shooting in some dank, you know, burnt out building set. And I was next door shooting the porno. <laughs> and I'm wearing like, you know, the waiter's outfit with the slick back hair and the fake mustache, look like Raleigh oh, fingers. Yeah. And I thought, and I thought, I'm gonna go say hello to the boys. <laughs> Like running over between things, and, and I'm like, "Hi guys, check out my crazy outfit." And, and they're doing like a serious scene. Yeah, right. <laughs> and, yeah. and, and Mark's like, "Great book, really great book." And I'm like, "Thank you." And I realize I'm, I look like such a twerp. With this. Porno Joe. He has no idea that I'm actually a crawl. He knows I'm going to the airport. He must know that's a, a wardrobe. <laughs> He's like. Why is he wearing a Mason D outfit? Did just fake grow that mustache for the show? Oh my god. That's how he travels around in a fake mustache? What a jerk. It's fine. Yeah. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, people? Where? No, still invisible people. No, they're actually stealing the microphone. Oh, do you have a question? But no microphone. Oh, no momento. Okay, we'll go over here. I have a, a question Wait, for is there you. any microphones? I have a question for you. Uh, the, for Mark. Uh, Mark, um... Wait, who the hell is asking this question? Mark, Mark, por favor, por favor. Who uh, has uh, Jim Beaver or uh, Richard Spade, who has a softer tongue? It's Sebastian, I'm Misha Collins. It's so great. Oh my god, America's Misha Collins is Brit busting into our Q&A. Dude. America, no. Wait, and now Mark's gone. Are you guys the same people? Ha! Oh. I thought maybe they'd never been in the same room together and I was going to find out they're the same people. You know, last time we were here I had everybody bring you underwear. 
Some of the women's underwear that I got are a little snug. <laughs> but I can, I can squeeze into all of them. Not to, not to use a, a pun, but in a pinch. You know, they all do. On laundry day, sure. I actually think that the underwear that you soiled with the soup was fan-purchased underwear. The pumpkin-colored uh, bikini all, briefs. I haven't worn any underwear but fan underwear for several years. You know, <laughs> the truth is, when you're bringing Misha gifts, Make it clothing and food for the children, because barely he's living off the good, the good nature of the fans at this point, right? <laughs> barely able to string it together. Just collecting for two Ladies songs. and gentlemen, meet your guys. Or ladies and gentlemen, who looks an awful lot like him. So I should want some that Italian expression before we well, hold on. I think Misha has a valid point. <laughs> who has the softer tongue of Jim Beaver? I think the man asked you a question. Yeah, I guess I gotta answer that. Yeah. Thank you, Misha. The fans want to know. Um, softer. Right. Jim's beard's a little rough. Jim's what? <laughs> Shallow puppeting me again. He does this in every continent. Do you realize the zebra stole the whole show? I said, oh, look at there. The zebra is... Anybody have a question for the zebra? <coughs> so wait, Jim's what is a little rough? Oh, beard. Ah, see? Right there. I guess so. Well, it was fun. Poor Jim. He thought he could handle it. He thought he could handle it. He was like, yeah, no big deal. No big deal. Kiss him. No big deal. No big deal. It's like kissing paper. With a beard. Oh, Jim. Okay, you had a question? Yeah, it's, it was a question for Richard on the behalf of, of a friend. Because yesterday, Rob mentioned that uh, with the issue of uh, the different, uh, difference of height, height, uh, height, height yeah. uh, yes. with Jensen and Jared, he had, he had to, to stand up on the Apple box. Yeah. On the box. So she was wondering if Mark had the same issue. <laughs> Mark or me? Well, this, you asked him a question about me. Yeah. You're wondering if Mark had an issue with the height. I can answer that question. Stand up. Yes, he did. <laughs> Why shooting? Okay, I'm, I did this. I did this. While, I, I did this last year here because these chairs are a perfect set. I'm doing it again because my experience with Jared and Jensen was the most emasculating moment of my adult life. I don't think of myself as a short man. Not excessively short. I can't dunk, but other than that, I feel fairly competent in the world. Doing tall tales. We're doing the scene where we're walking up the stairs in the school. We're talking and walking, and I'm leading them, which means I'm already up a few steps. And we get to the, uh, the plateau of the stairs, and I turn around, and we actually have a couple, a couple of lines together. We just go back and forth with each other. And uh, they're lining up the camera shot. It's a different camera shot, so they, they followed us up, and now they're setting up this camera shot here, and we're blocking it. And so Jared and Jensen kind of walk into the scene, and the director's watching the monitor and he's like, we need to get Richard in the scene. I said, I'm in the scene. I'm on, I'm on my mark. He's like, we can't see you. I'm, like, I'm on my step. And this is where my mark is. I'm like, get him an apple box. And meanwhile, they're literally where Mark is. This is, this is the framing of the scene. So they give me an apple box. I'm like, <clears throat> that work? Like, get another apple box. <laughs> How's that? I'm like, fine, you're in the camera. I wasn't even in the shot. Because here's the thing. A lot of actors in Hollywood, you might meet, are shorter than you expect them to be. You go, oh my gosh, you look so big on screen, and you're only 5'6". Hello, Tom Cruise. Good morning, Mark Wahlberg. 5'6", Tom Cruise? 5'2". <laughs> you made up with him too, didn't you? So, that's what I'm saying. You go to this set, Supernatural, and you have the short guy is 6'2". The, the tiny little Jensen apple, Jensen, six two. Jensen is called the small one. Yeah, I know. And he's like... <laughs> and Jared's ridiculously tall. Jared is, uh, honestly, offensively tall. 
13, 14 feet. Yeah, feet absolutely. <laughs> Changing light bulbs while standing flat for a while. I got chased around the Impala by him with a knife. And it's like, I suddenly realized just how terrifying that prospect is. He's enormous. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he, uh, he's a big kid. I was sore neck. neck. Every time I come back from Vancouver, my neck is sore. <laughs> so, the, the answer to the question is yes. Rob and I had a very similar, similar experience. And Mark? I've never stood on an apple box. <laughs> <laughs> but did, did you have to wear heels? <laughs> what was that? Did I have to wear his what? Because my friend said, probably, he wore the uh, men's shoes with... Uh, no, I'm like, whoa, hold the phone! <laughs> Were you wearing heels? <laughs> Thank I'm you. not sure, though. Okay, we have one, time, one more question. Hit us. Seppi, what's Thank up? You. Hi, guys. Hello. So, uh, Richard, in uh, your latest episode, I hope not the last, uh, you let us discover the, uh, the lady of your life, I mean, Kali. Right. Okay. So, um... <laughs> You both... Uh, uh, I wasn't in that episode. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. You both... Um, let us know which is uh, the actress that you prefer, do you prefer, do you, that you prefer in Supernatural. Oh, I, I, out of the... I think I've worked with two. One was a porno actress and one was Rick. Let's see. It would be insulting. <laughs> but I will say, did, did you ever work with Rick on, uh, on uh, uh, Battlestar? Yeah. With who? Rick, uh, who Rick played... Yeah, yeah, of course. I love Rick. That's who played... Um, no, no, Kali, and and she is phenomenal. Pretty girl, too. pretty easy on the eyes, and and a phenomenal actress. I and mean, she 